As you proceed in this week's episode, this is a trigger warning. The contents of this episode are extremely sensitive and may spark some extreme emotions. A woman is more. She is a sun ray of flowers that bloom. Find her in the tents. No longer silent in the tents. No longer silent. Hello, hello again, ladies. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of No Longer Silent. I am your host, Navita Milton Riley. And today, we have another powerful story to share with you. Our guest today, her name is Geraldine Johnson. She's a powerful woman of God. I've always seen her in the church, you know, singing and just doing her thing. And I've never actually gotten the opportunity to have a sit down with her. Well, today she shares her story with us. We are so grateful and we're so happy to have you. Thank you guys for joining. If this is your first time, thank you so much for joining the movement. If this is your second or third time, we are so grateful that you have been with us for so long. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into the story. Sister Geraldine, Geraldine, Sister Blossom, that's what I know you as. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am 60. September, I will be 63. I was born the 2nd of September, 1959. Mm -hmm. I am currently living in exchange. I was, I have an extremely difficult and sad childhood. Mm-hmm. However, the Lord has really brought me out. Yes. And after looking back, not understanding at the time that it was a sad upbringing. Mm-hmm. However, becoming a child of God, I recognized that it was extremely sad and because uh, we are living in different era different place yes it, i recognize it's like i have a new beginning new eye opening mm-hmm. new under, new understanding of my upbringing how sad and difficult it was okay and yes okay so i I often time, often time I think about how did I get out of some of the situation. I've been abused many times, many, many times without recognizing that it was abuse. I got away most of the time because even though I was a, a fat person, because of hills and valleys that I have been through, and the tickets and all of that and the stone I practiced to run really run fast and I recognized now that it is not my will but it was will of God yeah. that I escape escape a lot of the terrible the terrifying abuse sometimes I might talk about some of what I've never spoken about in many many years mm-hmm. for example yeah i haven't spoken about some in like 40 years i just but after hearing other person's stories sometimes i said to myself that that is exactly and the words that have been through yes when talking about them let me feel emotional and extremely sad but the fact that it a lot of things is coming out now, and I recognize that my story, even though I might got backlash from some, it is true. Yeah. And it helped me to understand 
be grateful, how to be grateful to God. And that he was there even though I did not recognize him. Mm-hmm. And I know I cannot make up for those times. But the fact that my high has just been opened a couple of years ago, I'm really grateful to him. Yeah. I, um, as I, yes. So, so thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing. You said that it's some things that you haven't talked about in over 40 years. And I know yes. that, you know, when, when, we, when we go back down memory lane, a lot of times, these yes. things can bring up a lot of emotions you know, but I'm so grateful that you're here because your story can help other people who are going through the same thing or have gone through the same thing, help them to heal and to come out. So I want you to start from the beginning because you mentioned abuse and I'm, I'm assuming that, um, from what you said, you're talking about physical abuse, right? Yes. 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 I want you to tell us a little bit about the physical abuse that you went through. Okay. From a very tender age, I I was brought up in a community in St. Catherine by the name of Orange Field. Mm -hmm. However, it was the extreme, extreme deep rural. So, for example, one person will have all 50 acres of land. We were on like a hundred acres. You know that yeah. we don't have any immediate neighbor. We have to ex- shout. If anything, you have to shout extremely loud for somebody mm-hmm. to hear. And then I was a child that I was afraid of beating. But so I understand, however, the beginning is that my mother did not want me. She has 10 children and I am one of the unwanted one. Mm. So she gave me to a lady. I'm trying to rem- um, I think her name was Jenny Gosha in, in St. Catherine. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm just, I can't say what I was told because I was a three-year-old child. And after she, she gave me to that lady, that lady gave me to another lady by the name of Olive Bennett. So, because... As I said before, she did not want me. However, growing up in Orange Field has been extremely difficult. I have to walk like, like a 30-mile journey to Bush. Mm-hmm. I used to go into a hamper. The gentleman, Mr. Ernest Benetit, both of them died now. But he used to put me into, the, into a hamper. A hamper is a thing that donkey, you put on donkey. Mm-hmm. I was so small until I reached like 19. I was able to walk because it's a journey. Like at, in those days, I have Alke and Kachi. So the Kachi blow like every hour. So we leave at like four o'clock in the morning. And on foot, we don't reach where we are going until the 12 o'clock Kachi blow. Wow. It was that far. Wow. And based on going, going back, they said it is shortcut and we are in the donkey and, and, and on foot. After reaching there, we, we stay, we are, we will stay there like, well, we go up on Sunday morning, we come back down Monday evening. Well, we, while, we, while there, we, they have a hut, make cut of tree bark and all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and stick and then the bed is leaf a lot of leaf when we say a lot a lot of leaves wow. and they just make up a box space and we sleep there and we have to as a little girl I have to go down like a gully like almost a mile in a gully for water mm-hmm. to come up and after I come up now they cook and we wash up the dishes and that is where we they do the farming mm-hmm. um so that was like Sunday and Monday. Monday evening, now we have to take the long walk. Sometimes I carry one pumpkin. And when I reach down back to Orange Field, when they lift the pumpkin off my head, it feel like my head, the, the, the head skull lifting off mm-hmm. with the pumpkin. The neck set in one position for so many hours that 
sometimes they have, somebody have to use it and to raise actually raise the, the neck to go to be straightened and it is very painful mm-hmm. and because of who they were we couldn't I could not say it pain it is pain in me I have to just run along cry in the bush because we have a lot of bush and those are the places that I always take refuge with the dog and the cow and we have a lot of animal um in the morning when I wake up I have to go miles with like, for example, we have like 20 goat and two donkey and a cow. We would be, I, it, when I say we, it is just me and a young guy. His name is, they call him Celos. His name is Lorenzo Officer. And we have to like run, step on the goat rope, tie this one. And that would be like when Five o'clock, Karchi Blue will be after the deer already going out with the goats because we know exactly, you know, the bush because we are so used to the bush. Mm-hmm. And then to, to go to school now, your uniform has to be extremely crisp. So she used starch and starch the uniform and barefoot, we didn't wear shoes to school. And However, we don't reach that part yet. So after we, like in the five o'clock in the morning, come home, we have to, most morning, not every morning, but most morning, like at least three mornings per week, we have to go about half a mile for water. So because we used to it, we carry like two buckets and we have to, we cannot leave for school until the jump full. Mm-hmm. After the jump full now, then we get something to eat and we're after school. Polygrown to be the name of the school. It is like three miles away from where we live. And we had to walk before eight o'clock. We have to reach school before eight o'clock. So you see, that is where the difficulty had actually started. Um, going to school now, at those times, we carry a thing you call slate. Mm-hmm. You have two kind of slate. One is is like a cockery. I don't. I will, that is all we can get. It can break, and that one is the persons that are we consider them as being rich people, because our slate now you can just fold it into any break, mm-hmm. but it's like a stiff piece of cardboard so when you write on it now you just write what teacher said and then you carry it up to teacher teacher rub it off so we don't have any homework or anything like that right because i was a girl i was seen as nothing because the boys at least three of us but one of them is a real family i was not and the other one was her husband. Silas was her husband, her husband grandson. I was the girl, and girl at the time, they did not love girl. We always be seen as worthless, mm-hmm. nothing good for nothing, ugly. Mm-hmm. And because I have slight bandy leg, your big foot then bent up, long lip, um, dog foot. Everything that persons describe you and so you feel empty because yeah. you are growing up and these are the kind of names that they call me. So I thought I had I am good for nothing. I becomes good for nothing. Right. And because I was good for nothing, if they do, I have to go to the good, the only good side of it is that. They make you eat, and you have to eat a lot. It is not by choice. They force you to eat a lot because they've said you have to work a lot. And because of that now, I only go to school. Like, uh, I go to the market with her. I pick Cersei. I go to the bush, pick Cersei, and bring to market. So, part it up, pick it out, and sell it. So I will go to school, like 
Wednesday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. I have never, ever, 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 ever been to a Friday school. Wow. And if I do something wrong, I don't get to go to school. So because of that, whenever I go to school and then the difficult part of it was that something morning going to school, but after you use something, after you have to buy a car and you see the stick, mm -hmm. after you eat up the stick, mm -hmm. you have to use that to wash and to wash my tool. I used to use like this because even though the dirt red and I'm barefooted, I have to go to school with my tool clean. Right. So it doesn't matter how rain fall, I still have to go to school barefoot. And I have to keep, use a piece of stick and clean up my toenail, go to the pipe, go to the pipe, wash my foot them before school. Getting in class now, we have to line up in the sun. Because we are not, we have not, we have not seen as anything. And even if somebody tried to motivate us, we don't understand what is motivation. Right. So because you know that even if somebody motivated you happy in your life at school, by the time you remember, by the time I remember that I'm going back to feed the chicken them, to carry the water, my, my thought does go back blank yeah. and become extremely sad. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I was an extremely sad little girl. However, because I'm good at hiding things, Going to church, I am always, yeah, I'm always singing. That is one of my calling, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, as a child, I used to write songs, but I didn't, I used to write poems and songs and all of that. But by the time somebody recognized that it is written, nobody know who write it or I destroy the people. Mm -hmm. I was so I was extremely low yeah. sad empty lonely and even when something uh, something somebody do me something I was not allowed to talk about it the way I'm supposed to so in order to get somebody attention I always do things out of the way I will break something that is that I considered valuable or I would just run away, go in the bush, sit down for days. For days, I will just eat like for a week or two weeks sometimes. I mm -hmm. eat like apples, ripe banana, because as I said, as a hundred acre land, we have almost, almost every kind of fruit on it. Right. Um, but my favorite used to be jackfruit and a thing you call civil range. I know civil range. Yeah. Um, but it's not civil, it's civil sweet. It is between civil range and sweet range. So it kind of tastes good to me. Mm -hmm. So I would like climb the tree, pick the jackfruit, burst it and eat it, and then break a cane and eat it after my stomach is full i just lay down right there and sleep i have never spoken about that ever ever yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, i develop this love for animal i speak to them and i think they speak back to me that's it but i know it was all in my mind yeah and uh, and so that was it was extremely difficult for me to to fit in, in, a, in a company or in a home because I was so sad. And the least good thing I showed and become so aggressive mm -hmm. and started to cry. When I say cry, ball so loud and bitter that some tempers would run me, run me away. So because of that now, I spend a lot of time, as I said, in the bush, in the bushes, in caves. All during this time, the lady that I live with, she becomes so fed up and disgusted with my behavior mm -hmm. because I know that I'm not loved by, in my mind at the time, 
I am not loved by anybody, nobody at all. So because I am ugly, fat, ugly, lazy, and everything, even though I was working so hard, mm -hmm. nothing did not matter. However, going to church, I learned to read. Mm -hmm. um, I used to love to sing, read, and take care of elderly. The lady I grew with is an Adventist, old time Adventist. And so I had to follow her everywhere. Like she do a lot of visit and she take care of a lot of people, old, like people of sore. Mm -hmm. I would have to go to the bush with her in the morning, like four o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. We light back lamp mm -hmm. and we set out. When we reach like a certain probably a mile in the woodland. She showed me a lot of different, different bush for different, different disease, different wow. and all of that. So because of that now, I, I know a lot of bush mm -hmm. and what they are good for. Because mm -hmm. I have very good memory from then. Kind of losing some right now, but from mm -hmm. then, I used to have very good memory. And I I Especially on Sundays, we, when I'm not gone, when we are not going to mountain, because we call the place mountain, when we're not going there, we go walking up and down to the committee, feeding people, giving them clothes, because in the Adventist movement, you have, I think you call the darkest leader, and she was the head of it. So, and we dress people cut, like, like somebody have, in those days, they have very large cut and sores, some bed sore. And I used to be like the little girl that have to give her the cosmetic. At the in those time, you never used to call it cosmetic. We, we you have all kind of thing that you used to dress. At one point, you have sol, I think you call sulfur mm -hmm. and 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 jeez. And so the sore would be so big that she would, I would have to pass the things them to give her and she add water and put salt in it and bear the source. And I mean, it's not like one, sometimes three, four different persons. If we go look for somebody that is bedridden, she would put them on plastic, them with other persons would help put them on plastic and turn them over and we bear the sore and dress it. And then we have a word of prayer. And that is where my spiritually, um, that yeah. is where I, I, I learned that there is a God. Yes. And in, in all of this, however, we have to wake up every morning, like three, four o'clock to pray. Like the, the battle, um, the, the, the lamp, the shade has, um, at that time, you call it, it the shade, right? Home, sweet home on it. Mm -hmm. and it has to be extremely clean and we wake up at those time in the morning and we worship so we have to know that there we learn i learned to understand that there is a god yeah. and we have to know like as as soon as i can talk would like say five six seven eight nine ten you have to know the ten commandment mm -hmm. you have to know the beatitude wow. And you have to know the books of the Bible. And we have to know all 13 lessons. You have to know all of that without reading. So is a, reading is an automatic thing. You must have to learn to read. But doing mass and all of that, it doesn't matter. Only things that they want you to do, you are allowed to do. Mm -hmm. And that is why I don't have... I don't have any education. I don't have a definite skill. And then weeding, as soon as I, you can hold the grass. I can, I'm talking about me. I can hold the grass. I have to learn to weed. So I was small, but I have to stoop down and draw, draw still. And then by the time I reach like 12, 13, I have to start to learn to use the fork. Mm -hmm. And and the machine, push it underneath the grass 
pull it up, yes. So we learn basic, be, my basic thing to learn is every single thing that has to do with the ground. And so it's like the ground has become my God. Mm -hmm. For example, if I am hungry, I would just eat some dirt and I'm good, I am happy, I am feeling close to God. That is how fruits and dirt has become to me. And then after reaching like 12, I used to hear people talk about mother and father and, you know, going to church, mm -hmm. having friends around me, their ear pretty, and they have in ribbon, and their frock pretty. And I go to church. That is the only time I wear socks and shoes. Of course, my socks, my shoes always bigger than my foot because my foot big. Mm -hmm. And according to them, I have giant foot. So, like when I go to church, other persons would like step on my foot. Because when they step on like the shoes, my foot just draw out because it's stuff up with a lot of paper. The, mm -hmm. the shoes stuff up. Really. And I remember they used to call me, say my shoes look like sheep, mega scale. And um, my underwear would be, she would made my underwear. So in these days, we call them bloomers. Mm -hmm. And um, she was a dressmaker. And when she make my bloomers, I used to be very happy because um, I have pretty bloomers. And I have some bloomers that I wear to school. I have some that I wear to church. So those that I wear to church, when I come home from church, Sunday morning, I have to carry water and wash them. Mm -hmm. And she would take them from me and fold them and put them down. And then those are church bloomers. So I have church bloomers. And I have yard bloomers. And when I go to school, I also have, because it's panty for me, you know. Right. It's panty, yeah. They, but, but as I said, growing up, now I recognize it is bloomers. So still in my childhood, but going to school, my infant school age, I remember, I, uh, that is where I learned a lot to counteract with persons. Because as I said before, I used to counteract with like, Dogs, cat, cow, goat, those were my, those are my friend. And I live as if I was, they are my parents because they take care of me. Mm -hmm. And I take care. I could rub up myself and like the donkey, I got the donkey. I would give my troops. I rub <laughs> myself. Yes, I, 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 my childhood is very interesting. I would rub myself on the donkey and then make some funny sound. And I would say, yeah, and laugh. And that in, at those, in those days, it makes me very happy. And because of the deepness of the, the place, the, the, the loneliness, I walk sometimes three miles. If I go to the shop, I would like three, right? have to go like three miles. And when I'm going to shop, I have to be it. And she called me ear. And she said, no, let me spit a ground and it's right before you come back. Mm -hmm. And so I will, get a, I will get a piece of stick. And I get a, you know, bicycle wheel, the outside of it. Yeah. And I would run it because it's a lot of downhill. I would run it down the hill and come back so fast. Because I always have to give persons on the outside the impression that I'm okay. Yes. And that is where I learned until now to, to <laughs> I, I recognize that sometimes it is false impression. However, knowing God, asking questions in church, I recognize that. A lot of, I develop this false impression. I call myself a liar. And I just admit it. So I still do give, I still persons right now still have some impression because the way I speak frently, mm -hmm. we know arm, arm and itching, itching. Because I'm speaking the truth. So I remember vividly, I remember 
very good. And what, as a little girl, as I said before, I love to sing and I love to read. Mm -hmm. you know, I started to recognizing now that I don't understand a lot of things that people are saying. I did not understand. I could not ask, tell her that I don't understand what you are saying. I turned to the dictionary. So I would like pick up dictionary leaf because I could not ask the lady to go with for anything. So I'm still, I'm, gonna, I, I'm going back to my childhood every time I remember something. In those days, we used to use the condensed panel. Mm -hmm. The, <coughs> sorry, the condensed, the, 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 the milk tin. And we would use a stone and beat it, beat it and turn it. So when you, when you use it and beat it, it lap together. You have to imagine what I'm talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the kitchen, you call it wackle. It wackle kitchen and a part of the name butchery. And I have my can, everybody have their can. And Sundays now, we drink out a cup. And during the week, we, you have a thing you call chew stick, but we use, we cut it at the bush. Mm -hmm. And you cut a long piece, like a whisk. I don't know if you know it. A lot of person that in my age and growing the deeper world, I know what I'm talking about. You, you use it to, you chaw it up. And then you use that to brush your teeth. If you don't have any, you get the toothbrush and you are a piece of cloth and you, you beat up the coal, the fire coal and mix it up with ashes, wow. with, uh, with salt and use it and brush your teeth. And Sunday now, and Sunday is like holiday for me because I get to brush my teeth with toothbrush and toothpaste. Or uh, if any stranger come along, wow, we have to pretend. So we get toothbrush and we get toothpaste on it. And we, we go outside and take the, 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 the pan and brush with teeth. And we drink all a cup. You know, mm -hmm. those cup in the those days was some, it wasn't cup, it was mug. So when you drop it, chip up. Because that is, that is what we are. You have a thing, a tree you call Goody. You cut it and clean it out and calabash you eat out of that during the week. And sometimes eat out a plate. Mm -hmm. But on Sunday, it was like, uh, oh, oh my goodness, Sunday morning, we look forward to Sunday morning. You don't look any wood. And you don't need to just stuff in the get rice and peas and chicken. Mm -hmm. Chicken, now we would run on the chicken, them, catch them, they come and fall. And catch them and then cut the spaghetti rooster and cut off the head. And we have a decent dinner. And then we go to church. So church um, is a part of every Sunday night, every, I don't remember if it's Tuesday or Wednesday night, but we have to go to church. And church is like three, four miles away. And we like back lump. It was so amazing. When we see electricity, oh my goodness, it's like things could not be better. We don't have any, you know. But when we go down now and go to church and see the lights, we don't want to leave because we don't have any TV or anything, you know, because at that time, like if we saw on TV, it's like when you're passing people here. And if a window open and we are pass, we would steer. I would steer because. I would like to know how on earth the people and get on the TV in a such a little, in a such a little box. Oh, they fit so much of them fit in there. So as I said, it was extremely deep rural. So yes, we, yes. And like holiday night, we would. I remember one night them said I have watch night, and we go under the light. Are you believe me? Saying it's the best time of my life spending the night underneath the light. Because in a turn off, many one will say we turn off or it can turn off. Yes, it was that deep. So we used to back lump because that we used that is what we used to mm -hmm. and walk walking miles and running miles was nothing. 
I remember, however, as a child, a white lady, she just loved me. And she said, she said, Sister Bennett, because that is what they call a lady. Sister Bennett, this little girl have a talent. And Sister Bennett said, what talent? At that time, you know, I was one of the top persons singing in church. And she said, she sing like an archangel. That's how you know, I said, poor me, you know, what she had talked about. <laughs> and she said, yes, what a sweet little girl. Wow, let me tell her something. Until today, I feel that sweetness. Yes. Oh, nobody never tell me that. Nobody. Let me tell you something. I cried. I, I tell her something. Everything then tell me for that whole month. I do it because let me tell you, I feel like I was in this. I was walking and here. Mm -hmm. No matter, nothing. I don't know nothing to get beaten because somebody just simply say, tell her me that I'm a nice girl. The following Sabbath, I go to church. You know, I'm going to sing again because I get the opportunity. Yes. And although my clothes was ugly and color color, um, because in those days, once they, you used to have a dress name, Crimoline. That is like, I saw some people know when they marry them, they make the old time, like some old time movie, English movie. Mm -hmm. They make, they make, they make it clothes stiff and cock off. And the lady bring my Crimoline dress for me, darling. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you come inside this, please? And the, the lady bring a crimoline dress for me. I'm going to tell you something. She go tell me if you try it on. Boy. <laughs> I reach the heavens. And guess what? I never get to wear my crimoline dress. Because Aunt Mia said it's too good for me. She took your dress away. She took my dress away and said, when me have on this, me I go show up. So she take your dress and I don't know what she do with it. Believe me. And all me know was me, even to, until today, the criminal dress, I remember it was a light pink with some little hole in it. I never get to wear the dress. So what, what were some of the other things that she did when you were growing up? Like, what were some of the punishments that you got and, and, and um, the way that she would speak to you? Because I'm hearing, you know, verbal abuse and you're saying you had yes. really low self-esteem because you felt like nobody loved you. Yes. What were some of the punishments yes. and the things that she did? Okay. In my mind, some of the punishment would have been not being able to go to school like for a month. Like if I did something oh. in her mind that was wrong, mm -hmm. however, the boys would have done it. And yet in those days, when I go to high school, it is something like you're, you, you, you like you're a king, you are a queen. Mm -hmm. So my punishment would have been the boys go to school only. And all I do most of my life, I work. Like, as I said, in the field, mm -hmm. when I clean the house, she would use her finger to, you see, I could mark on a mirror and a spot leave. Mm -hmm. Well, when I shine the floor, if she mark on it and a spot like that leave, I would have to go and get a bush called salindine. And you have another bush. I don't remember the name. Mm -hmm. And we use it to boil dye. I think you call dye. And I would have to get the wax from the bees or a candle and rub on a floor brush and go back down on my knees and clean the floor all over. We don't use room to sweep your um, house. We use cloth. We have to kneel down. No, we, I have to kneel down mm -hmm. and use piece of cloth. And she said, that is to make sure that I get into the corners. So I have to use this cloth and sleep the entire... It's a two-room, however. Mm -hmm. And I don't sleep on bed. I sleep on the floor. That is because we weep the people bed. So I never get to sleep I, until I... And if I go... I don't go anywhere. I never leave home until I was like 14 when mm -hmm. I decided to run away. I don't go spend all the day. Everybody else will go. The other two guys will go. And so I was always on the 
punishment. Right. So, and um, I started to recognize that like 10, 12, that date is punishment. Mm -hmm. But I have to work along with it because I have nowhere to go. Right. And I am afraid to speak about it because I can't, mm -hmm. because I will get beat. And my beat now is that cut off a piece of rubber band off a motor tire. Or them get like whatever whip, orange whip, and they would and 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 pimento some piece trees, pp three pieces are thick, mm -hmm. and they would shock it. They would plat, like plat them, twist them together and tie them, and them would soak it. And when they start to be when we finish, soak it in what? Water. Okay. They soak it in water. And when they finish beat me, because in the man, I was such a bad person. That sometimes I was extremely strong mm -hmm. and can run fast. And when they beat me, sometimes they beat me so till there is no tears left to cry. But just a twist, 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 twist. When they look at me, I'm swollen. I then lick me, just lick me, lick me, lick me, lick me. Like for an hour. Lick me, just lick me, lick me, lick me, lick me. Somebody just swell up. And then them boy some bush give me. Then sometimes I go look the bush mm -hmm. and like seriously, I rub it, rub it up and, and quack a bush, rub it up and put in a sun. And then she would beat me in that. And then, because my skin so sore, she can't wear no clothes and just wrap me up in a while. As I said, I never spoken about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never, I just leave it alone. And then sometimes, like for the extremely bad, they wrap up the one piece of, one piece of old um, sheet. I mean, that is how we can go inside in the days. Because once I wake in the morning and tidy the place, we can't go back in there until night again. And that is how I would, they would do me. Um, so you said, you said you ran away at 14. Talk to me about yes. that. After I understood to go back to St. Catherine, go back to Linstead now, in the market, me hear them start to talk, oh, my mother, whatever, whatever, whatever. I said, mother? At the time I was 14, I could read. Mm -hmm. And I start to ask, can I, you know, look, look a question. And one day I remember Aunt me get a, a letter from Miss Jenny Gosha and she carried it home. When she got home, she, my, the band that I go with master, she could not read. But it was very nice. And she read the letter to him saying, after she finished reading the letter, she said, a blossom mumma senicum. I said, whoa. Meaning your mother. Some have, yes, some of one mumma. <laughs> and because, oh, I see parents contact with their children. I was thinking to myself that if it's some other take care of persons, then I would want one, not, mm -hmm. not my lady, not, not, not aunt me, you know, the other persons. When I see all other persons, because I'm right. starting to grow now, I always said, okay, because I'm going to stretch in a shoes and socks, match up and ribbon a day, ear and clip and bubbles and so on. And, you know, as a child, because even though I was um 14, I was still, my mind was like a 10 year old because of, I, I, I have no self-esteem. I have no mind development. I have I don't have a mind of my own because I was still treated as I was then. Because I did not have any breasts and menstruate and all of that because my body big, but I was still very young. Right. And then, so because I don't know a lot of things, um, persons misunderstand my looks because I look like but I am not. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so, when, after she read the letter, now me decide, now I'm a tea for the letter, I'm going read it. And then, I go to, I recognize, I start to put one pieces together. So, I take some clothes, and I find out that the boss is not star. Find out my mother that watching. And I just look up my own little something. I walk about three miles. I listen, as I said before, with the Kachi, which was the time it blew a can. It blew every hour. Mm -hmm. So I would know, I would know what time to get up. And the miles I have to walk to the main road. I, I map out everything. I hawks at school with the main road there. 
with the shark out the end out and things and things like those. By this time, I started to go to another school but in my village. And that is where they made the mistake. When I go to village school, it is more town school because the children from the village actually attend that school. Their parents work like all can see and will say, you know, in a man, men are top of top of children, them. Yes. I was so not recognized because again, I go to school barefoot, my ear natural in a my mind, because I did not know that is 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 that is the way they, they are here are they are Indian white people. Oh, and I feel yeah. yes, I, I would feel very odd. So I was I would get beat up, picked on the whole abuse again. Anyway, after mapping out the road and earways lead to and something, something, I decided to try to run away. I run away from saying I the morning in question. I it looked like because the moon was shining, and when the culture blew, I well, I started to walk. That is about because it blew right through the night because the workers have to listen to the culture to what time to go to work. So it blew through the night as well as through the day. So that was like an alarm for the workers. Yes, a mm-hmm. blowed alarm because you can't hear it like 20 miles away. Wow. Right. But I know the time when they blow. So that was my time. Mistakenly, I, I mistakenly, it was look like I oversleep because I take some clothes and pack in a bag, put on in the house, you know. And then I decided to sleep underneath the house the night. And unfortunately, when I reached the main road, the rain started to fall. So me wet up, the bag wet up with the clothes. Mm-hmm. I ring out, take up, you know, take up the clothes and the bush, ring it out, ring out the bag, the clothes in the bag, and still insist to go on the bus. So I sit at the roadside and every bus I may sip, that I sip, I see because it always has a big North Star on it. And I sat there for the whole night. It's so because I go too early. Right. And I sit there for the all night, just at the Alcan, almost Alcan gate. There's a community by the name of village. That is where I come out in the before year, me alone and Jesus. Two bush. It's as, as I said, about three miles are just bush, but I wasn't afraid. And I sit at the gate Alcan, until I finally, finally, me see the bus coming and me stop the bus. And the bus stopped. When I go on the bus, the driver said, little girl, where are you going to say, oh, was there a morning? And I said to the driver, I said, I look for one year, them Jenny Gosha. And she said, see me here in the back. When they grew on there, Miss Jenny said, where are you going? I said, I read the letter. I take out the letter. I sure I read it, wait, wait. Mm-hmm. And tell her, I said, I see mother. And I want to go my mother. Because you know my mother. And I want to go. Um, it was a very big mistake, but I'll get into it a little more. This has been part one of a part two program. We urge you to join us next week as we bring you part two of this week's episode. No, 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 no.